Good morning, and welcome to our latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. Today, we're joined by Bill and Jennifer from Fourth Valley College, who are going to talk about the Learning and Digital Skills Academy. And this, this is a follow on from their, their, their digital community that was set up during lockdown and how it's driving the college forward in terms of its digital adoption and transformation. So <laughs> let's hear it from the people who know. So Bill, Jennifer, over to you. So just share screen. Um, so yes, digital transformation at Fourth Valley College. Um, just a wee bit of background behind myself. Um, and Jennifer. So Jennifer is now the Learning and Digital Skills Project Lead um, for the Learning and Digital Skills Academy. Myself, um, I've been a lecturer for oh, now 26 years um, and moved into a, a role as a Learning and Digital Skills Mentor. Um, so still practicing teaching, but also working half the week as, as a mentor for staff. So how this all came about, uh, well, actually we had um, a creative learning and technology strategy, which was released in 2017 back in the old campus, which is no more. There's actually only one block left standing, it's all demolished. Um, and uh, that was basically a five-year plan to start to introduce um, digital technologies along with our creative learning strategy. However, along came um, the COVID pandemic. Um, there had been some discussions uh, before the pandemic about the idea of having a, a kind of digital community of some sort. So on the 10th of March, I think it was, the, uh, the college closed uh, its doors for COVID. That very afternoon, um, myself and a few of the learning technologists, Jasmine, uh, Emma, uh, and quite a number of others actually, we set up the uh, Fourth Valley Digital Community on Microsoft Teams. Um, and as you can see in the screenshot there, uh, that consists of a number of channels um, uh, for uh, general conversation or general notifications. We've got Ask for Help, we've got Bite Size Training. I think Jasmine has already done um, a Bite Size um, sorry, a uh, um, virtual bridge on the digital community. Uh, so really that led to uh, accelerating our plans in the creative learning and uh, digital technology strategy. Um, and through the pandemic, I think it's become uh, much more um, important for us as far as delivering and supporting um, staff uh, with digital capacity. Uh, and this is just a, um, a mention about the necessity um, to maintain service delivery through the current health crisis um, and beyond. So um, by October really of 2020, we started the process really of bringing together um, learning technologists, lecturers as mentors, um, to develop this idea of having a Learning and Digital Skills Academy. Now we officially launched uh, in January. We are part of the Learning and Quality Department um, and the staff uh, within the Learning and Digital Skills Academy are all highly experienced, cross college, um, lecturers from all different areas. And I think that's an important part there is that um, having that breadth of experience, um, both in teaching and also using technology and uh, you know, learning technology team, the Moodle team, um, et cetera, all coming together under one umbrella um, means that we can drive forward that digital ambition um, much uh, clearer. So, give you an overview basically of the learning and digital skills team um, and then I'll hand over to, to Jennifer. So as I mentioned, um, uh, as part of uh, um, learning and quality, so our head of learning and quality is um, in charge of the whole thing effectively. We've got an LDS manager, uh, Jennifer herself, project lead, um, and then 
we brought in uh, what we called Moodle team, which was our learning technologists, really. Um, Jasmine and Emma uh, and uh, our MIS support officers we brought that together. So we've just got one uh, complete team. Um, so I'll hand over to Jennifer, who can talk a wee bit more about the project. Thank you, Bill. Um, could you pop it across to the next slide for me, if you don't mind? Yeah, absolutely. Well, just um, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, so as Bill has said, we were um, like all colleges, like all uh, and uh, educational establishments, we were really faced with a, a, a both a challenge and an opportunity that had presented itself as a result of of COVID nineteen. Uh, challenge in that we had to almost overnight transition to a completely different way of remote working and also remote teaching and learning. But with that challenge also came the opportunity to take what was the, the digital transformation agenda at the college and ramp it up by several years because Prior to the pandemic, what had become, what was necessarily a conversation about what the future might hold and might look like with regards to advancements in digital technology and, and ed tech skills became very much uh, an overnight expectation. Um, and Bill and all of the hard work that he has uh, put in along with colleagues around the college were summary in creating a, a learning community of professionals, which is still thriving today, a year on, and has become a bit of a cornerstone of our uh, support and practice that that we that we uh, issue at the college. Um, but the the reports that really helped shape our direction. You can see some of them um, here. Uh, we used um, as examples the, the GISC Shaping the Digital, Digital Future of FE report. The college, Scottish College of the Future report featured very heavily in our planning, as did the CDN Digital Ambition. Uh, we also worked to shape our, uh, our own ambition and um, our own work in relation to the vision that our principal of FVC, Ken Thompson, has really always maintained as a vision for you know, 2025, 2030 and beyond with regards to the, the digital transformation agenda. Um, so we kind of had to take into consideration a number of these policy shapers that allowed us to then develop our own learning and digital skills academy ambition, a digital ambition which primarily takes our activity up to 2025 to coincide with things like HN, Next Gen, um, and looks to beyond this in terms of building and upskilling, consolidating skills that have been built through the past year and indeed before, but also upskilling for the um, the learner demands and the learner flexibility that is now part and parcel of, of what we have to do at our educational establishments, what the demands that we have to meet as far as our establishments are concerned. Um, so the kind of points that we needed to consider was this seismic transformation that has taken place as a result of COVID-19. And uh, we, we found that this has really altered the timeline completely. And we would argue that it's moved uh, digital demand and driven digital demand up the agenda by, we would say at least five years, if not more. Um, and you can see from the ambitions that we have developed that we are looking really cross college in terms of not just the learning and learner engagement and learning and teaching enhancement, but also how we can 
use our tools and use the support that we provide to develop a commercial aspect of online delivery for the college and really ramp that up so that we are you know driving activity across both face-to-face -face learning and online learning utilizing the the whole spectrum of digital technology but based within the Microsoft 365 suite as a, 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 a nucleus for that um, also taking into consideration in these ambitions, um, HN Next Gen, which is you know just around the corner essentially, and some of our colleges have been working um, in terms of of uh, working groups on the development and and you know, how the new units will look. So how those new unit specifications will be delivered to meet the the needs of learners to um, also provide a, a, a greater platform for things like the meta skills that learners are expected to develop and therefore to meet the needs of industry and increase their employability in essentially what is industry 4.0. Um, so the, the digital ambition that we have has 10 pillars and uh, we're going to kind of look at three in more depth so that you can see exactly what kind of activity we're driving forward as the Learning and Digital Skills Academy. Um, so we have three main, well, 10 ambitions, but these three pillars that I'm going to uh, talk through just now um, really kind of highlight the different activity and support that is being provided by the LDSA. And um, so the, the first ambition, uh, the centre one, is driving a digital first ethos. And to do that, we really need to take old thinking and update it so that everything that's taking place is transformative, not for just the learners, but for our customers, for, from a corporate services point of view, and also for our staff, um, because if we can really harness the, 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 the wealth of best practice that's out there in our college community and really sort of drive that forward, then we feel as if we are going to really embrace the skills that are necessary to take us into the future. So to do that, we have looked to develop a baseline to determine um, staff digital skills. And we have also been developing self-assessment tools that they can utilize to then determine what their learning needs are on an individual basis and work with us as a team, both in terms with the mentors and also things like our training officer and so on, um, to really kind of drive forward their skills and, and, and upskill themselves in terms of their knowledge and also their confidence. As Bill has mentioned, we've sought to really build professional learning communities. So starting with the FEC digital community on Teams, we have grown to 527 members of that digital community today. And many of those members actively engage with us through training delivery in terms of structured training, through mentoring support, through coaching and different things like that. And it's also allowed us to really kind of invite in the in-department champions who are working really hard to develop their own skills in use of technology and to enhance their pedagogy. So it allows us to identify who those people are and work with them too so that they can take that back to their departments and really kind of help us to spread the message of what we're trying to achieve, but at the same time as well, work with their colleagues on a peer-to-peer -peer basis as well. We have also attempted to um, build digital training and resources, and that is ongoing because there is a lot out there. Um, we use the Microsoft Educator Center as a, a cornerstone of a lot of our Microsoft uh, 365 delivery. Um, but as well as that, 
we are constantly seeking to develop pedagogical approaches and so are looking at all the time into how we can design our own courses, how we can help with instructional design and you know, learner engagement. Um, so we have a portal on our SharePoint, which is uh, dedicated to the resources available that all staff can access. In terms of the second pillar, uh, we're developing the confidence of all teaching staff in application of digital pedagogy. We are looking at really pedagogy first CPD. And this is linked to the GTCS professional standards and the professional update. We are required now as FE colleges to um, register with GTCS going forward from 2021. And so it's a ripe opportunity for us to take those standards and link them to the professional development that is going on with uh, lecturing staff and academic staff at the college. We also, as Bill has said, as an LDSA offer extensive mentoring and coaching. And uh, we can work with either you know, people who are just looking for us to troubleshoot with them exactly what kind of challenges they face, or we can develop sustained mentoring relationships with these individuals to really coach them and help them to gain confidence that allows them to experiment with their delivery and with their practice so that we are creating a, almost a testing area for them to try things out, knowing that they've got someone to fall back on should they need further help and support. So we're very much kind of taking a developmental approach with this and not a performance driven approach. It's about raising confidence and it's about offering support where we possibly can. Um, in terms of driving investment in Digitech and contributing to things like industry and so on, our um, Moodle VLE upgrade is currently in train. And as I've mentioned before, we are working with different departments to assist and support with development of HN next gen units. And as I mentioned previously, we see ourselves as a bit of a test area for innovative uh, digital technologies and software. So we're always trialing new things and we have very, very keen individuals working in the team who are really driven to find out more about the, the next piece of, of software or the newest app that's come on and really kind of trying to help staff to find their feet with uh, the things that they want to in investigate. So it's really about supporting the staff to use these technologies that complement the pedagogy for them. So pedagogy comes first and foremost. As I was mentioning, we use a lot of Microsoft in terms of the applications that we use, and we are trying to drive and build awareness and knowledge through use of Microsoft digital technologies. So the LDSE team collectively and individually holds different uh, qualifications and certifications. Um, and we uh, hold, for example, MIE expert, Bill is an expert, um, MIE master trainer certifications. And what we are trying to do is further strengthen this professional community that we have using Microsoft as a cornerstone of that. So we have nine currently MIEEs in Forth Valley College. And as well as that, we have other members of staff who have in their own time developed knowledge of Microsoft applications. And they are working with us too to help really raise awareness of not only the free resources that are available on the, the Microsoft Educator Centre, but also the, the, the sheer level of development that you can work towards um, and the confidence that that brings. Um, so that kind of community of practice beyond the scope of the project is going to be what takes the momentum forward. 
So the kind of successes that we've had so far, as I mentioned, we've got at the moment 527 members of our Microsoft Teams digital community. And in the past few months, we have supported over 250 staff members with different ranges of support from your know, one time to on the job coaching to sustained mentoring. And with those staff, we have developed sustained mentoring contact with 75 members of staff at the college who will continually come to us. We have built a relationship with them. So they will come to us and work with us on different challenges that they face within their, their uh, teaching practice, or it may be that they are looking to ramp up the, the uh, digital engagement that they have with their learners. Um, it might be that they want us to come in and observe their practice from a student's bird's eye view, and then help them you know, navigate the tools that might be available to help them in, enhance their, their practice. Thanks to Bill and his MIEE, we have also launched 21, uh, uh, 21st century learning design training at Forth Valley College. And that's proven to be a really big turning point because the, the, old, the old toolkit that a lot of people have is now having to be updated. And 21CLD provided by Microsoft takes 21st century learning design approaches and weaves them into the digital classroom um, and really can help a, an individual kind of look through the lens of the learner at how they deliver their teaching and really kind of make real advancements with how they do things in terms of collaboration, knowledge construction, you know, building their knowledge that way. Um, as I mentioned, we've established a professional learning community at the college for our Microsoft uh, champions. And we are currently working with commercial curriculum and also corporate services to support them in developing courses. So anything from human resources, to the commercial delivery business development team we, we are working with. And we're also, as mentioned, trying to develop ongoing the learning resource that's available, center it and really kind of build it around the keynote tools that we want to see being used going forward. So um, we have included some reference materials um, for you in this, namely, the policy documentation that we have used, but we've also included our Fourth Valley College uh, previous creative learning and technology strategy, which was really the forebearer of where we are now and the learning and digital skills ambition. And uh, from Bill and myself, we would really like to thank you um, for you know, being here today and listening to us and we're open to any questions you may have um, but thank you very very much for your your attention. That's great Jennifer and, and and Bill and and what you outlined there just really gives us a view of of the ambitions of the college and how how you're realizing those ambitions through the development of this this unit it's it, it 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 sounds great so um we still have some time for for some questions so i'll open this to the floor uh any any questions for jennifer and bill i i will well, i will oh well leslie yes uh-huh by all means i think it, it kind of became obvious that you're very much a microsoft a institution i was wondering though that in addition to the Microsoft qualifications, did you mm. give any consideration to perhaps introducing maybe a certified a, the CMALT certification or even the, the Moodle educator certification aspects? Yeah. Uh, Bill, uh, I'll, I can start and you can add if you want. Is that okay? Absolutely, yes. 
Um, so yes, sea malt is something that we're looking at at the moment, Leslie. So I have submitted a business case to the human resources team for some budget to, um, for us to maybe to work towards building our portfolio, our learning technology CPD portfolio, um, so that we can really you know drive the the out. Um, the outside of things forward. So the Association of Learning Technologists, um, the, the, the structure is very, for me, is, is very much what we do. Um, and I think that, you know, I would like to see our college really engage with that. Um, the, the Moodle side of things, I think there will be a lot of things that will open up with respect to the upgrade that's ongoing. Um, because what we have seen over the past year is definitely a drive towards the use of Teams as a learning platform because it is very, um, it, it's very functional, it's, it's very easy to use and navigate. And what we will have to do is look at the integration going forward as we develop the digital, um, the, the, the digital platform at the college as to how the Microsoft side integrates with Moodle as a VLE and really develop that as a VLE. But Bill can say more as well. No, I think it's absolutely. And it, it maybe sounds like it's uh, totally focused on Microsoft. And uh, it's actually not. We've, we have Moodle. We've always had Moodle for quite a number of years now. Um, and I, I think part of uh, the... Uh, the idea that a lot of people are now doing the MIE is mainly perhaps through necessity during the pandemic that we had to switch to a, a, some sort of platform um, and that happened to be, be Microsoft Teams. Um, I mean, I I'm myself um, have done some Moodle training. I'm also a Moodle administrator. So um, and I think that's important actually to say that don't put everything, you're not looking to put everything in, in one particular um, software company or one type of technology. Um, that, uh, there's loads of opportunities out there. Uh, I mean, I, I think folk that are using Apple, so there's, there's Apple have their own one, there's Google, Google Classroom then. Absolutely. But I, I think it's more, more sort of um, basing your development on the tools that you're using. Um, so if you're using Moodle, then then absolutely. Could I could I just quickly ask um, when you when you talked about identifying a baseline of digital skills, um, obviously that was influenced slightly through the the recent experiences of of the lockdown and remote teaching. So how do you establish that people have arrived at a sufficient level of capability? Um, how do you how do you evaluate people's skills um, reliably? Because I, 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 typically we ask people themselves to evaluate themselves and feel how to judge themselves. Do you, do you feel that's the best way forward, or have you come up with any other approaches? And so I would say it's a mix of different things that we have looked to develop. Um, there is, there is a point where you have to ask people, you have to say, you know, how would you evaluate where your skill set lies? And so we have, we have looked at that and sort of asked people, you know, are you, do you feel confident in your use of this technology or do you not feel confident in your use of this technology? So that's the sort of starting point. But also with that, we have built in around uh, different sort of almost diagnostic style quizzes that allow you know, individuals, if for example, they are using Moodle, they can take, um, they can take little mini assessments, almost self-guided assessments, which will help them to learn at the same time as participating in the, the, the self-assessment as to where to, how to use that tool. Added to that in a complementary level, we have the contact that they can have ongoing with the LDSA. And so we will have our own, um, we will have our own perspective as mentors as to how that person is doing. So if they're asking us a question about how to weave that into their classroom, we will know from their own point of view whether they're experiencing a challenge with its, with its use and implementation 
or by observing just really how confident they are with their use of that. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, I would say. Um, and certainly Bill, from, from his point of view as well of, as a learning and digital skills mentor has the benefit of really going in and working you know one-to-one -one with those staff to really sort of see how they are engaging with the the, 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 the different technologies it's great yeah. Jennifer and um, I, I see uh, Walter had raised his hand for a second uh, yes uh, thank you Jennifer for that presentation and um, it's quite exciting to see the way that you've been taken the, the initiative here and moving things forward for the for the college. In terms of the learning design model, though, have you adopted a particular model across the college for learning design? Bill, do you want to answer that one? Because it's using the cornerstone of 21 yeah. CLD. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, it's still a work in progress, but we're um, transitioning effectively using the Microsoft's 21st century learning design course that's on the MEC. Um, but we're actually delivering that um, at the moment with uh, staff so that um, instead of just being online on the MEC and running through the course yourself, we've got a group of people so we can discuss the issues around yes. that. But it's very much moving more towards that. Um, how do you go from a traditional kind of teaching approach, I suppose, to one where the student is uh, very much more collaborating with each other um, and building up their, their own knowledge? So it's moving, um, I would say, slightly away from uh, spoon-feeding information to more, go find out about that information, let's have a discussion and then let's, let's develop and design that learning together, both teacher and student. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're using that 21 CLD uh, approach. Yes. To develop those well, okay. I wonder if you'd consider the ADI model or Merrill or Gagne or yeah, some yeah, other yeah. models that are out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we do um, look at that type of uh, uh, model. Uh, but obviously rejected them. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, they're all welcome. They're all welcome. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. But in terms of a consistent look and feel for the college, it's 21 CLD. That's what you would aim for. Yeah. And I, I, I suppose there, there is that challenge where you're allowing people to experiment and, and use the technology and apply it in different ways. But at the same time, alongside that you do need some level of consistency so i can i can appreciate like if you if you set a standard in some way then you know that it, it makes it clearer for everyone i i always get confused every time i turn up at a restaurant and just look at a menu there's just too many things to choose <laughs> <laughs> okay we have time for uh, just perhaps one last question um for this recorded part of the session so um does someone have a question before i come in with one Oh, a quick one from me that's um and that is uh, in the development of this was there engagement with the student body in uh, working out the approach yes very much so so we've yeah. been working with the fourth valley college student association and continue to um and a lot of our uh, a lot of our uh, feedback and evaluative data has come from our listening to learners forum um, so in terms of the sort of flexibility that is being asked for by students nowadays, that's really informing the approach that we are looking to take going forward, because they are telling us that they want to be able to access learning at a time to suit them. They're, they're telling us that they want to you know, not have to travel um, extensive distances to access their learning on campus where they could possibly do it remotely. Um, and it, it, it's, it's all sorts of considerations that, that fall under that, that are really kind of helping us shape what, you know, our approach looks like. Um, and also the demands that are placed on the, the learners and uh, as they go out to get their, their first jobs, their first employment, um, also looking at things like our foundation apprenticeships and our, manage, our, our man, uh, 
modern apprenticeships, you know, these kind of demands that are being placed on our learners now to engage digitally with things is just rising and rising. Um, and you know, Bill's engaged with HN Next Gen really kind of very, very closely. Um, so there's there's lots going on with the learners. Thank you very much. Well, I think that's all we have time for for this recorded session um, of, of the Virtual Bridge session. So if you do have time in the future and are able to join us for a live session, we'd love to see you here. But until then, Bill, Jennifer, <laughs> thanks for sharing your journey with us. And for you joining us in YouTube land, stay safe.